two. One, two, three, four. Earlier this week I was reminded about this time that I was at the Mall of America with my family and we were just waiting for an elevator. And I was probably about like 10 years old or so and my sister, she had to be about three. And so we pushed the button to wait for the elevator and then eventually the dinged and the door opened. But I don't remember whether we were going up or down, but I remember that whatever direction we weren't going, that's where the first elevator that came was headed. And so we didn't get on because it was going the wrong way. But my sister, she didn't know that. And so she just walked right on. And I just remember so vividly seeing and hearing her as the door slowly closed, just going, Aah! And just through all the chaos of all the people that are always at MOA and couldn't open the door. And so we sprinted for the escalator and we met my sister on her floor and we got her and everything was fine. But she was a little shook up and understandably so. But it got me thinking about how people react so differently to situations like this, like getting lost. I think there's three different kinds of lost kids in the world that I could identify. First, there's the kid who liked my sister, who's just totally freaking out about it. Do you hear me? I'm not afraid anymore. And then there's the kid who's lost, but hasn't quite figured it out yet. Are those microwave dinners any good? I don't know. I'll give them a whirl. For the kids. And then there's the kid who's lost, but just could not care less. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Just like the ones I used to know Where those trees are Listen and children listen To hear sleigh bells in the snow The snow for the night which of those three lost kids you are or were, but I want you to think about it for the next few minutes as I talk, and it'll make sense here in a second. Like, if you know Jesus already, I want you to think about which of those lost kids you were before you met him. Like, did you know you were lost? Did you even care? Are there any areas of your life that you still feel a little bit lost? Or if you'd say that you aren't a Christian, or you're not really sure what to think about him, I want you to think about which of those lost kids you are right now. Like, do you think you're far from God? Do you ever feel a little lost spiritually, or do you even care? Because I think if we're honest, I think most of us are pretty aware that something is missing when we're far from God. Like our lives might feel a little empty, we might feel incomplete, we might struggle to do the things we know we should do, or stop doing the things that we should stop doing. And when we're far from God, when we're spiritually lost, we often feel spiritually starved. But the good news is, is that we can be full. 
I love what Jesus says about himself and his mission in this passage. It's Luke 19, 10, and he says this, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And the story of Christmas is the story of God refusing to give up on us. It's the story of our Creator continuing to seek us out when we are lost and even when we're not seeking Him in return. Because it's easy to get lost. It's easy to wander from God and get too preoccupied with our own selfishness. But Jesus, He came to seek every single one of us lost kids. The ones who know that they're lost. The ones who haven't yet figured out that they're lost. And even the ones who know that they're lost but really don't care. And wherever you fit along that spectrum, I need you to know that you are loved. Like whether you're chasing after Jesus or whether your parents forced you to come here tonight, this applies to you. Because the world, it's going to tell you that you're insignificant, just a grain of sand on a beach and that you don't matter. That there's no hope unless you create it, that you deserve what you earn. And if you don't work hard enough, then you'll get what's coming to you. Nothing. And Jesus, he sees you as who he created you to be. He sees you and he says, even though you don't deserve this, I'm giving it to you anyway. I love you so much that I'm giving this to you in spite of the brokenness and darkness and messed up things in your life. I love you. I care about you and I want you to know. And so I'm coming down for you. And in the crazy, sometimes difficult circumstances we face, we see that the world is broken, but in its brokenness, God sent a healer. Into the darkness, God sent a light. Into the sadness, God sent a lover of my soul and a hero, Jesus, who beat sin, beat death, beat shame, and created a whole new path for those who trust him. A path that goes racing into life. And that's true for you today, whether you accept it or not. It's there, it's done, it's finished with Jesus on the cross, and it continues to be true because of his resurrection. Jesus was the gift that we didn't deserve, but we were given because of his extraordinary love and grace for the people he created, is us. And now, as I finish up here, I just have a couple of questions and one challenge for you. My questions are this. Do you think that you might be a little lost? Like, do you think that you might need saving? If you've never received God's gift of salvation through Jesus, but you'd like to, like, let's talk. And if you have, when's the last time that you thanked God for the gift of Jesus? And then my challenge for us this Christmas season is this. Let's celebrate. Like, as Christmas approaches, let's celebrate the fact that God engineered a plan to rescue us from our sins and ourselves. Like, let's celebrate that Jesus willingly gave himself on our behalf. Let's celebrate this undeserved gift of Jesus this Christmas.